What's up guys, welcome to my channel. Um, another video with Maria. And if you're new here, um, I love to talk about astrology, philosophy, spirituality. So I have my uh, Sagittarius in the first house and also Sagittarius rising. So I love to answer all the big questions in life, like who am I, why am I here for, what I can do, like what's my life purpose here. So if you like to find out yours, definitely stay tuned and just watch the relevant videos to your birth chart. So in this particular case, we are going to talk about Pluto in the fourth house. Um, if you haven't watched my Pluto video, uh, pause this video, go back to watch it so you understand how to find out your uh, soul's intention for this lifetime by knowing your Pluto placement in your birth chart. So um, now we're talking about Pluto in the fourth house. So I always start with the house first, and then I integrate with the Pluto itself. And so in evolutionary astrology, Pluto, no, fourth house, um, I think all the astrology, fourth house relates to uh, our family, our belonging, family history, our past conditioning, and our security, our emotional security. And having Pluto in this placement, it can intensify this energy. Basically, uh, you will have some um, trouble in your home family or your caregiver or your nurturing environment in your childhood to push your soul to actualize its evolutionary intention. So as always, uh, I'm gonna share my screen. I always organize my thoughts. And I hope you're not discouraged by the, the picture I chose. I hope it's not too depressing because I have a couple of people in my life um, has Pluto in their fourth house and I do really feel for them. Uh, it's it, it can be really a challenging placement to have, basically. So if you have watched my Pluto video or you understand what Pluto means, uh, Pluto represents our deepest uh, unconscious desires that cause our incarnation. And we have certain uh, intention or direction our soul wants to... Uh, evolve to that direction or learn certain lessons so for you guys having Pluto in your fourth house your evolutionary intention is really developing that inner security and inner belonging uh, in yourself not rely on the external conditioning like you should not rely on your parents to give you that nurturing and home feeling and belonging. You should not rely on your lover, wife, husband, fiance, boyfriend, or you should not rely on your job. Like, yes, this job gives me security and everything I need. I feel great having this job. Like you could, and then this always evolutionary force comes in and takes away from you that's the thing with Pluto like it's not a very pleasant um, planet like it's all about destruction and rebuilding or death and then rebirth the phoenix rising so you are going to go through a certain traumatic experience certain things taken away from you to make you realize certain lessons uh, learn certain perspectives and you will be reborn um, so having having in the fourth house really it really hurts your family um, condition so it will work out a couple different ways it really depends on where you at on your soul's evolution journey because some of you guys might be a little bit ahead like you did learn those lessons. So life is a little bit easier on you. Like, yeah, she or he did suffer in the last lifetime and um, gain certain knowledge about this inner security, uh, becoming the source of love for yourself, 
uh, not depending on your family, partner, or job. So if you have learned some lessons in past lifetime, this lifetime, you might have an easy start. Basically, you do have a nurturing parents. You do have nice siblings supporting you emotionally. Uh, however, if you guys just starting this journey of um, finding that self-reliance, self-inner uh, security, you might start a little bit rough because your soul wants, I guess, it, it wants that situation happen so bad and it puts you in that condition. You have to, it's not even like your choice. You have to have that self-reliance. So you will be positioned in a family or your soul will choose a family that's not nurturing. Uh, basically your emotion needs are not met or you're not well nurtured or maybe you're not as nurtured as your siblings. Um, it could be play out different couple scenarios. It could be that your parents always working never have that emotional availability to you so you can't really express yourself communicate with them having that love receive their love you just find yourself in your room by yourself or it could play out a little bit extreme you might not even have a parents because i have someone in my life um he was abandoned as as a baby and then got adopted and adopted parents aren't very nurturing either so he was forced to develop that like okay I need to rely on myself I can't expect anyone to give me that emotional nurturing or security and I don't know if you guys have that extreme situation but it could be one of your parents uh emotionally neglecting it could be father or mother um it could be out of examples it could be extreme case to they totally abandon you or even like they can be very abusive to you uh to the mild version of maybe they're just busy with their work they don't really spend time with you or if you have learned those lessons in past lifetime you might have a nurturing parents in some case but it's very rare Mostly you guys are maybe somewhere in the middle or the extreme case of having abusive parents or neglecting parents or they just left you or one of them left you, uh, things like that. So this environment molds you in the shape of like, okay, my needs are not met through my home family, so I have to meet it somewhere. So you guys either gonna slowly like, you either realize your lesson and develop that inner security, but it's not that easy because our ego always in the way it wants to uh, meet that needs outside somewhere. So you guys might try to meet that need. Uh, you basically recreate your childhood situation in your adult life try to meet that need basically let's say if you didn't get your parents attention nurturing um, emotional caring for you when you're a child you grow up you marry someone you expect them to that meet that unmet need and this can create this dysfunctional dynamic uh, because whenever like I said at the beginning, if you try to rely on anything external, it will be taken away. So you might lose this partner or you, they might leave you or they can't stand it anymore. Or they're like, uh, you just want to be with me because of this. Or it could be a case they also meeting their needs through certain aspects of you so they're kind of like you guys are codependent on each other which is not healthy for a long term but at some point you need to realize like hey I cannot depend on circumstance outside of me some of you guys if you can meet your needs in a relationship you might try to meet at work uh, maybe you work hard you're in a certain position or you 
become an entrepreneur and make um, your name out there. And then the way that others treat you may need some, uh, some of your needs that you didn't meet when you were a child. So you might try different things outside of you to try to meet those needs. And um, you might try that your whole life and never learn that lesson. And that's okay because we are um, eternal beings. So nobody is in a rush going nowhere. If you don't learn that lesson this lifetime, you have the next lifetime, the next one. So there's no rush, no judgment towards the self. And I was, yeah, I listed a couple like positive and a negative aspects of how this plays out in your life. So at some point, if you learn those lessons, you realize you have that, you come to that understanding, you can become very nurturing person and understanding and supportive because you've been through that. So you understand that trauma, you understand how we're deprived when we're a child. So you see that in others, you can be very supportive, understanding and nurturing to others. That can be the, the positive way of playing out this karma. Uh, in a negative way, you guys, because we have like, Pluto creates so much trauma in us. You need to come up with a coping mechanism. So your coping mechanism could be denial. Basically, you shut it off. Like you force house ruled by cancer. Cancer like represents our emotions, our inner world, how we um, process things internally. So if it's too much for you to process those emotions, process those trauma, you might just shut it off. I remember when I first ride, rode a roller coaster, it was just too much for me. I hated it. And I can't get off the roller coaster in the middle. And there's no way for me to get out. So what do I do? I turn it off. Like I pretend I passed out. Like I don't want to experience this. I don't want to see this. So I pretend pass out and I close my eyes. Like, gosh, I want this to be over. <laughs> so it's kind of like that. Like if you feel, I guess there's nothing to smile about. It's like sad story. Um, if you guys feel that intense emotion of anger, resentment, like that friend I was talking about, like um, he, he never talk, wants to talk about his past or anything of his childhood experience because he has so much trauma and resentment and anger there. He don't, he's told in denial. So if I don't admit that that ever happened or exists, I don't suffer. So that could be one way of coping. Um, another way you become really resentful towards the world and you don't know why. You just, you just see negative negativity in everybody. Like, oh, that person could be lying. That person could be a thief. You don't know what that person's intention. They might take advantage of you. Like you always see the negative side of things and you, you can become very self-protective. Like, I don't wanna open up to people that can hurt me. Um, so who knows what kind of people they are. So you can become resentful towards to the world or you can be in a relationship, you can be abusive, like more dominant because you, you have such a strong desire to feel secure and in order to feel secure, you got to control your environment. You know exactly what to expect. That gives you, like, from ego perspective, that gives you a sense of security. So you might control your partner, um, the way they behave, the way they speak, and then that gives you a sense of security. Um, you're also very good at exploiting the emotional weakness of others because you suffer yourself a lot and then you can 
instantly see what are the weak point of other people and then you can just laser attack them, their emotional weak point and they kind of surrender and then you kind of get sense of uh, in joy or happiness or elevating yourself by putting down someone else. Uh, again, like there's no judgment. That's just another coping mechanism until you realize someday, hey, this is not healthy. I want to know where this emotion coming from. Um, then you really start to exploring yourself and then you find a healthy way to meet those needs so you're not taking it on others or projecting to your environment. And it could be uh, showing up in your life a different way. Um, let's say I talked about, let's see, I talked about the extreme case or going net or denial, like I didn't go through that. That then that didn't happen, and you don't want to feel your emotions anymore because they're just too traumatic. You can't handle it. The other case, you might experiencing too much emotion, um, too extreme. You're like <clears throat> you're going through the cycles of emotion, super excited, happy, and then sad and depressed, and it just goes on and on. So the evolutionary force in your life, it just repeats the certain theme, like a relationship you're attracting, it's playing out the same scenario again and again, just showing, throwing right in front of you, like open your eyes, see, like, do you see the pattern? And then if you don't, you just get confused and become hateful, like why I keep why I keep interacting same shitty people or why I keep doing the same thing like you might get confused but if you at some point if you just catch the pattern uh, see all the scenarios playing out in your life and there's a certain pattern to it you can dissolve it in a second it's like oh I see why this is happening in my life again and again if I can do this all of rest of it dissolves and I finally feel emotionally nurtured, secured and safe. So I hope um, you guys find this helpful. Uh, let me know if this resonates or not. Um, also, just keep in mind that uh, your other placements in your chart, because you're not only about Pluto, you have so much other stuff going on other planets, other zodiac signs in your birth chart that supporting this evolutionary intention. So developing this inner security might play out differently for different zodiac signs. Um, you might find this inner security if you're in a Scorpio, you find it in a Scorpion way, like self looking within. Um, contemplation, analyzing, finding the deep truth. If uh, it's ruled by a different Sagittarius, maybe it's like more exploring or Gemini or any other zodiac signs. And you also have different planets interacting with this fourth house. So if you like to know how this exactly plays out in your life, uh, reach out to me, I can do a detailed reading for you and help you heal this trauma um, faster so you don't have to suffer that pattern. Um, same things or same kind of relationship you're going through again and again, like it's time to stop it, honestly. So yeah, that's what I have for you guys, Pluto in the fourth house. And let me know if this resonates and email me if you like to read uh, if you like a natal chart reading and you guys have a great day.